It was an emotional decision for me in that I think philanthropy should come out of you. Your, your doing should come out of your being. Philanthropy refers to giving money to charity or other useful causes, the, which is supposed to come from a natural desire to promote the welfare of others expressed by giving money to these causes. Yeah, it consists of two parts. Philo means to love. Anthro means man. So literally, philanthropy means the love of mankind. And the person that has this love and a lot of money too, that person is a philanthropist. Most, most well-known billionaires are also great philanthropists. One good example is Bill Gates who, uh, you know, was worth some crazy number of billions of dollars, who uh, apparently has given most of his money away and says he's only got a few billion left for himself. On the other hand, I'm not really sure, but I think Warren Buffett has certainly been talking a lot about giving his money away, but I'm not so sure if he has so much given his money away yet or if he's just waiting until he's dead. You don't have to be rich to be a philanthropist on a small scale. Giving money to food banks, churches, um, welfare organizations, political causes, these are all forms of philanthropy that uh, people of modest means can do. I had this big idea that I was going to, emotional, that I was going to take all 100 families out of the projects of Green and Green, and I was going to give them a new life, and I was going to buy them homes and stuff. The projects refers to public housing, and that is where people live who cannot really afford to pay for a home. So the government uh, provides them with housing, oftentimes at a very low rent or even at no rent at all. And these places where they live are referred to as the projects. Now, typically, these places are not that well maintained. A lot of times there will be things that get broken that don't get fixed. And oftentimes uh, some of the people inside them, these might be you know, fairly dangerous people as well. So generally the projects are considered to be a uh, very low level form of growing up and uh, people that grew up in the projects will oftentimes refer to their childhood in negative terms because of uh, the uh, negative surroundings they had to grow up in. So the projects is government subsidized housing developments with relatively low rents or no rents. A good example of projects is Cabrini Green in Chicago, which also happened to be located right next door to the most expensive area in town. So over a period of almost 20 years or even more, the uh, the government uh, tore down the projects and uh, has largely replaced them with fairly expensive real estate for quite wealthy people. So right now there's a situation of very wealthy people living right next to poor people because part of the agreement for tearing down these, these projects were to rebuild low-income housing which they did. So uh, now what were these high-rise projects ended up getting replaced by low-rise uh, townhouses, which, you know, are fairly, fairly modestly sized, but uh, which are deemed to be more um, practical for modern life. A lot of famous uh, singers and especially hip-hop artists have grown up in the projects and uh, saw the projects as the inspiration for them and their, their songs. 
which has also given them what is known as street cred, which means that they can understand the difficulties of uh, downtrodden people in the environments that they grow up in and how difficult it is for them to rise up out of the environments and the negativity that's associated with that. So some good examples are Richard Simmons, 50 Cent, and, and also Jay-Z. These are all people who rose above very, very negative circumstances to become highly successful. Mm -hmm. Y'all play ball. Mm -hmm. Y'all have played ball, mm -hmm. right? And you've been in the zone, and the world moves slow, mm -hmm. and the ocean, like the, like, the, like the rim is big, you can't miss it, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, to be in the zone refers to a condition that athletes get where they perform at a very, very high level of performance. And uh, it's been described as almost an out-of-body experience or altered state of reality. And typically it's used in baseball where the, the pitcher will describe the ball is being is moving in slow motion and he can actually see the threads on the ball as it's spinning and where the batter says that the ball looks as big as a watermelon and he hits it in slow motion and it goes for a home run so it's sort of a temporary or very ephemeral condition doesn't last that long but when it does the athletes are blessed with this amazing performance and hopefully at the most important time too uh, such as a playoff or a final game now every once in a while there's some amazing performers that seem to be in the zone almost all the time good example is Michael Jordan where all he had to do was get onto a basketball court and he was performing a hundred hundred and ten percent the whole time better than anybody else right there right now a lot of people think LeBron is playing in the zone where his level of talent is just so high that it's amazing or Tiger Woods in his prime but you know, nothing lasts forever, even for even for them. Similarly, being in the zone can refer to somebody who is a spectator in a sport where they're totally focused on the game. So somebody might say, I, I saw the whole game. I was completely in the zone the whole time where, again, it's almost like they're having an out of body experience where they feel that they are actually one of the players on the field. Um, and that's one of the reasons why people like to watch athletic contests anyway. Or being in the zone can also refer to a work experience as well, where someone is focused on uh, achieving something, oftentimes a creative venture of some type, where they get in the zone and then they create something and it's just incredible. So this is something that songwriters oftentimes experience. Good example there is Bob Dylan, where he said that when he was a young man, he was in the zone. He was able to just write these songs and they came out and they were all great. But he confesses that now that he's gotten older, he's not in the zone anymore. And he just doesn't have an in him to write great songs in his mind. So in this sense, being in the zone refers to a blissful state of mind where your thoughts flow easily and creatively and which is also ephemeral at the same time. It only lasts for a certain period of time, then it goes away, and there's no real great explanation for why it exists or why it goes away. I was watching a golf match the other day, and for the first nine holes, it looked like Tiger Woods was back in the zone. I was just waiting for him to just knock that thing. But then for some reason, I don't know what happened, but something on the 10th hole got him upset. 
he fell out of the zone and he ended up uh, triple bogeying at least two holes and he ended up losing the match. So I felt real sorry for him. James Cameron, he's a very famous movie director and he's very, very well known for getting into the zone when he's making pictures. He just turns into a maniac for like six months at a time and then the movies just end up incredible. A good example is Aliens and also Titanic where he just had a real special quality where he was able to make those movies great. A lot of people don't realize this, but the Beatles were totally in the zone for almost four years in a row. They ended up with more hits than any other band in the history of music. A good example of a musician being in the zone was Paul McCartney with the song Yesterday. He was, according to the story, he was uh, making some eggs one morning and he just got the inspiration for the song and wrote down the words, came up the, with the tune. took him about 15 minutes to come up with uh, what is considered to be one of the greatest songs of all. So he was definitely in the zone when he wrote that song.